Hey, so welcome back to the channel where you get to watch me build a Minimax 1100R with a front end modification for a half VW engine. And uh, this past week, my, uh, uh, my parents, uh, I spent the week with my grandkids and my daughter and my wife and my parents and my brother. Um, it was my mom and dad's 60th wedding anniversary and my dad's birthday, my dad's 83rd birthday, so it was a really big deal, so we just got together and hung out for the week. So, um, I'm back in the shop today, and while I was gone, I was processing uh, this front end uh, again, just thinking about it, and one of the things that I realized is that uh, I still have to put this three-quarter inch uh, member back here in this corner, and it actually just goes up against the uh, the other three quarter inch piece at the top here, so I have to get that length and get a couple of those cut and put in place there. And since the nose is coming around, um, I have my uh, gauge here um, so that I can actually measure what this is. So I'm gonna throw this in here and figure out what I'm working with. Um, because I'm gonna need to cut, I'm gonna need to cut the edge of it so it actually fits back in that corner because that's what we've got right there. And that is about 38 degrees. Um, so I'll figure out uh, exactly how to, uh, how to cut that piece and uh, I'll get the um, exactly what I need there. So it's uh, 38. Let me make sure I'm back at zero. Actually, it's not 38 because I didn't get set to zero. There we go. Now I'm set to zero. 38 didn't make sense anyway. So it's not like I believed it because I didn't. Um, I was about to figure that out. Let's try this one. All right, that makes more sense. So it's 79 and a half, uh, roughly, 79.4, but 79 and a half degrees. So that would be uh, 10 and a half degrees off of 90. So that means I need to bevel that edge 10 and a half degrees so that I can fit back in that corner nicely and uh, fit up against my, uh, my other piece at the top there, um, up underneath there. And then we can uh, get that piece uh, put in place. I may consider uh, actually doing that with the uh, fuselage over on its side because this epoxy, when it's in a vertical format, um, if I don't um, have uh, silica in it or something, um, it's just going to sag. So. Uh, so I'll probably set it on its side and then do one at a time, get those in as I'm doing other things. I can actually take my flush router and I can route this piece. I can pull all the staples out that I put in um, and get that taken care of. And then we can go um, inside where uh, you, can, you can't really see because I don't have a light there, but... Um, I will get the light so we can see. All right, so what I did um, last time uh, is I, I went ahead and got the uh, got this um, station epoxied in, and you can see how I've got it clamped in place. You saw me fit it before, and it's just uh, epoxied all the way around. Um, and it also gets some uh, corner pieces here. So, but let me get these clamps out of here so we can actually see what's going on. All right, so what I thought I would do is uh, I thought I would test some uh, I would test some of the routing uh, on the bottom of the fuselage here. And I can show you, uh, this is a half inch, half inch router bit with the bearing on it. 
And so I was just uh, in the process of just routing this off. You can kind of see right here how uh, it just changes from the uh, sharp edge to a really nice, really nice round edge. So I wanted to, uh, there's a, the area where the landing gear goes it has to remain flat. So I have to locate that. Um, it's, it's about, uh, let's see, let me take a guess here. It's about right here is where it starts. So I'm just going to take a shot at where that landing gear is sitting. Uh, I'll, I'll measure off of the front of the, uh, the plane and get that. And then you just fare it in when you get to that location. So I'm going to measure that now. So I know exactly where that is. I can mark it off. Um, and then uh, I can go from there and I can continue. I can continue routing down the, uh, the bottom here just while I have it up on its side. This is ready to be routed. So I might as well go ahead, route the front section um, as well as the back section. Um, so I will uh, get some measurements here. Um, I'm three quarter inches shy of uh, my zero line according to the original plan. So um, all I have to do is measure basically from here back and find out exactly where uh, where I need to be and I'll make sure I stay you know an inch or so away from it and then fare it in. And uh, this will also give me that really good opportunity to come over and get this piece uh, cut that's going to go in go in here. Um, I am debating whether I should maybe even just put a small piece um, up in here. It is, you know, helping to hold this front end together. So uh, I may put a piece um, up under there. Uh, maybe I'll take a piece of a, uh, oh, maybe half by five eighths or something like that and uh, figure out this angle right here, then I can uh, just cut it and put it up in there just to have a little extra material um, where that attaches to the firewall. And uh, yeah, so uh, let me get some marks going and then we can, uh, we can go from there on this. All right, my plan says that I am to be 37 and a half from my zero line. Um, and uh, my zero line is three quarters of an inch in front of this. So I think what I'm going to actually do. So it shows up basically right here at uh, 37 and a half from the zero line. I'm three quarter inches back of that zero line. So we got uh, 37.5, 37.5 minus 0.75. Gives me 36 and three quarters is uh, 36 and three quarters. And then I'm gonna go an inch forward. So uh, yeah, 36 and three quarters. So 36 and three quarters, and then I'm going to back off an inch. So 35 and three quarters. I'm going to go from there. Alright, so 35 and 3 quarters is where I'm going to stop, which is pretty much right at the break line where that changes from flat to going this way. Uh, and then the landing gear 
So if I go back to um, 30, my 36 and three quarters, that's actually where the very front of my landing gear is going to be. And now I need to measure how wide the landing gear is, so uh, where it sits on the fuselage. So that's going to be here. And the landing gear is 17 inches wide. So I'm going to give myself an inch. I'm going to actually go 18. Go 18. That puts me right here. So let's double check these real quick. Thirty-five and three quarters, and then an inch puts me to the front edge of the landing gear, and then uh, seventeen inches takes me to the back of the landing gear, and then I have one inch where I'm going to ferret in from there to there. So, um, all right. So now I've got my marks. I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to stop here. Make myself a little arrow here so I don't get mixed up between these two lines. So I'm going to stop there and I'm going to stop right there. All right. So you probably saw uh, you saw me get get this section all routed, um, and that's uh, all the way back here. And then you have to plan out and you have to stop before you get to um, where the elevator uh, or where the horizontal stab crosses. So that just kind of fares out right there, and then uh, then we go forward. Got a really nice radius, and then you stop again. I kind of planned out a couple inches where I, where the uh, high point of the wing is going to actually come right up next to the fuselage, and so you kind of fare it out right there. And when we get the wing on, we'll actually figure out exactly where that is and do a little more fairing in there. And then I, I got it uh, all the way up to um, all the way up to here, and then I turn the corner. And I stopped because I realized this really needs to be finished off with a piece of plywood here uh, up to this point. And then uh, then this will be able to just continue, continuously route this all the way to this corner right here. So uh, I have to epoxy a piece of plywood on there. And then I got the whole bottom routed and you can see I had to stop. You stop here where the uh, landing gear starts. So I just kind of pulled the router away as I was moving. So, um, and I left myself a little bit of a margin here, and then the landing gear fits right here, and then, uh, and then it starts, it comes to about here, and then it starts to fare back in. So I left myself about an inch uh, each direction. 
um, so I can so I can work with that uh, and then when I get back here um, this is routed all the way to the tail um, all the way to back there so that rounds off nicely and I noticed I just had one area where for some reason um, I've got a little bit of a void uh, that I have to fill and I think I'm gonna fill this with just straight epoxy first and uh, see where it goes I think where that's located is actually uh, let me get the light so we can see Actually located right there so it doesn't look like anything is going to make its way to the inside so but I'm gonna pack that with epoxy and everywhere else I looked I have another very small void right here um, which I'm not gonna I'm um, gonna probably just fill that with maybe some micro balloons because it's it's not like this one which is uh, I don't know how far that goes but um, at any rate it should be it should be filled so I'm gonna take care of that and then I just had a very small one right here that's kind of the same way so I'm gonna I'm not sure where that void came from either but I'm gonna fill that one as well and everywhere else I've looked uh, everything looks really good I just I see epoxy so uh, I don't have any issues there um, yeah, so I'm just going to mix up some epoxy real quick, drip it down, kind of force it into these spots here and see if I can maybe oversaturate it a little bit. Uh, I may uh, maybe put some tape on either side and uh, see what I can do there. But otherwise, um, I feel really good about the about everything so uh, yeah all right so let me uh, let me get that going and I'm not quite sure of the time let me take a look here 10 27 yeah my time's pretty much up but I'm gonna mix that squeeze it in there and then that'll be it for today and then uh, when we come back we can flip the whole thing over and repeat all these steps uh, on the other side and get these two uh, get these two strips epoxied in place here and we still have to make these two and get those in place and then we'll just keep uh, we'll just keep moving uh, keep moving in the forward direction all right cool let me uh, get some epoxy all right so that's it for me today thank you for hanging out with me and uh, checking out the video I didn't do a uh, I didn't do a whole lot today but um, what I did was fairly time consuming, so um, I'm pretty happy with uh, what I was able to accomplish. So um, anyway, um, hey, if you're not a subscriber, I invite you to hit that subscribe button and that little bell. If you wanna follow along with uh, all of my episodes here, you'll get a notification every time I upload one. And um, yeah, tomorrow, tailwheel training. I'll be back in this Tabria. Uh, and then I'll probably be back here for a couple hours just to flip this over and maybe route the other side. So, all right, I will uh, catch you later.